are happy to welcome from Raymond. We have the uh, principal, one of the principals of the firm, principal of technology solutions and system solutions, Brian Young, and director of client services and business development, Bill Burke. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank, Thank you, Bart. You. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian, welcome. Your first time. It is. Thanks for having me on today. Nice to meet you, Bart. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. And uh, Bill, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, it's been it's been a while. Yeah, I think it was toward the, the tail end of the uh, the pandemic. It, it, yeah, we. <laughs> 2020 when we didn't know who was going to work and when they were going to be there and <laughs> when the doors were going to open. So yeah, it's a little bit back more towards normal now. Yeah, I'm seeing more cars uh, in the parking lot at the Jackson Raymond on mm -hmm. Robinson. So that's good to see you mm -hmm. guys. Yeah. But there's still a lot of hybrid work going on. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of that. It, you know, the firm's been very good with regards to, you know, making sure that everybody is, you know, in a, mm -hmm. in a comfortable position of where, where they'd like to work. Um, and uh, I think most of our associates realize that, you know, working from home can can be okay sometimes, but it's mm -hmm. nice to be in an office environment as well. And so I think most of our most of our folks mm -hmm. are on some sort of hybrid scenario. Mm -hmm. Well, I introduced you as uh, uh, part of the team at Raymond, but you're also part of Raymond Technology Solutions. What, what, is, what does that mean? Yeah, Bart. So Raymond, uh, as you know, in the community, been here a long time, servicing clients across our core business functions, tax, accounting, wealth. Clients were asking for IT services. They were really struggling with the technology challenges over the past or recent five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we became part of Raymond officially uh, as technology solutions. We fit in underneath the solutions umbrella and we provide those IT services to the community. And I think a lot of people have heard that this month, October, is National Cyber Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing, e even here in Jackson, we've had some uh, pretty uh, highly publicized uh, cyber attacks, ransom. Right. Uh, it's right here. Mm -hmm. And I think because it's happening here, it happens everywhere, we're more aware of it. Absolutely. Is there more of it happening? Yeah, great point. You mentioned this community. So when you think about national cybersecurity awareness, it's about education and awareness. That's really what it is because it goes to show, big or small, cybersecurity has become an elevated threat that continues to climb. And then we also have some motivational factors or some things that are happening along technology that's really driving the, uh, the, the peak of this. And so awareness and education is really our driving force part, really important. And I think every office, they, they try to, uh, you know, every business, they, they try to make everyone in the, in, uh, in the company aware that, hey, don't, don't click on uh, this type of a link or mm -hmm. don't share your uh, password. Don't, uh, that, that's part of it, but mm -hmm. you really can't, it's, the threat's changing so much in the way that these bad actors are, uh, are infiltrating, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to keep up. It is. Yeah, but you hit a very important point. I, I think that's the low hanging fruit and that's part of the awareness and education. Out of all the tools, technology tools, or out of all the, uh, uh, the different marketing pieces that you see, education of your employees, right? Invest mm -hmm. in them because the bad actors, they also know the easiest target are the humans. So the technology is good. There's layers of it, but if you can get to the human, we're the ones who tend to make mistakes. So if we can invest in, in the human element and really bolster their, their education and their experience and teach them what to look for in, in this new theater, you, you actually have done a great job and great service for your own firm. So what, what are the main risks that uh, organizations or individuals uh, yeah. face with, with cybersecurity? Yeah, it, it still tends to be what they call BEC, business email compromise. Mm -hmm. And you hit it on it earlier. So inbound emails coming in, and if you recall some of the old days when it first started, this isn't new. It used to be something like the Nigerian prince who was going to give you $25 million. And if we you still get on. those emails. <laughs> you still get them. <laughs> but they were easy to spot, right? So grammar was terrible. Language was bad. You would expect that. Now, recently, language is perfect. Grammar is perfect. The logos and the coloring is perfect. You really have to be more aware than ever and then look for some things that aren't obvious. That's where the education piece comes in. Are there criminals using AI to uh, construct these emails and graphics? So there's the cat and mouse game. You're, you're spot on there. 
So with AI, we all know, we've heard about it, adaptive technology, it's, it's all about learning. The bad actors start incorporating that into, so they find more creative ways to trick the human element. Um, and it's about being vigilant. It's again about education. We uh, are being urged um, to use multi-factor authentication and mm -hmm. people hate that because you gotta get a text message to yeah. your phone, you gotta copy the code. It just adds, it's a, ha a little bit of a hassle. How yeah. important is it to, to actually set up MFA for your various uh, sites? Yeah, it's, uh, it's probably within the top three by far. If you went through a cyber liability policy review, or if you went through an attestation form, they're now requiring MFA on everything. So if you look at, at the marching orders, get a good backup in place, make sure you test your backup so in case you ever have a bad day, you know you can get your data back. Um, second, educate your employees and then get multi-factor authentication on. Uh, you know, security is not convenient, that's one of our sayings in, in IT, mm -hmm. but unfortunately it's a new way of the world. It's just the way we have to adapt. And you guys will work uh, on an individual basis and uh, everyone mm -hmm. probably has worked with a uh, some sort of a computer or software services provider and, and mm -hmm. sometimes I hate to say this, uh, they're not the easiest people to work with. Um, not here though, right? You hear that? <laughs> <laughs> no, we do, it's, it, 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 it's, a, it's a challenge, yeah. right? And, yeah. and you think also about what happens when mm -hmm. somebody makes reports at incident. It, mm -hmm. It's a scary time, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, they don't, in more cases than not, they don't really truly understand what's happening to them and their business mm -hmm. in the heat of the moment. So they pick up the phone and they want to talk to somebody and they want to talk to them really quickly, right? And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, one of the things that we're very proud at at Raymond, we do, we always send out client service um, uh, satisfaction surveys. Mm -hmm. And you can see, uh, you know, some of the infographics that we've shown here today, we've got an average response rate of less than eight minutes where an industry average is about three hours. Mm -hmm. So imagine you don't know what's going on with your business, you don't know if you're under attack or not, and you mm -hmm. might have to wait up to three hours to hear back from somebody, that would be pretty daunting. So mm -hmm. yeah, we're very proud of the fact that we have people that are actually answering the phone and getting back to you very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, three hours, that can be crippling. Yeah. It can cost, depending on what your well, business menta is. Mentally and financially, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah, suddenly you can't, oh, you can't I can't get my email. Right. It's the end of the world. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have uh, clients that mm -hmm. have uh, told you, as you mentioned, uh, they're, they're very satisfied. They like the, uh, the response team. And you, I understand you brought a, a little uh, example of uh, one of your uh, satisfied clients. Mm -hmm. we, we, yeah, we have that. That's, uh, that we, we find that to be as impactful as any piece of marketing or sales promotional material we have mm -hmm. when we can actually have our clients reach out to us and say, yeah, we would be happy to tell others about what you do for us here. Uh, greatest honor. Yep. All right. Well, Bill, let's take a look at that. Mm -hmm. About two years ago, we restructured. We've been in existence since 2008, but we were mostly a virtual organization. I reached out for help to see if Raymond would be able to help us with some of the things that I was going to need to do to basically start up a company and all the infrastructure associated with it. Working in defense and with what we do, that is very sensitive information. We are held to certain security standards to protect that information for national security. RTS has been great in learning that alongside with us. There's things that I that I have questions on or are going to be required of me. I have a, a whole Rolodex of people I can call at RTS to ask the question. And if they don't know, they find the person, you know, within RTS or even outside vendors um, for something specific for us because of our security requirements. Wow, so it's the email. It's the email. That's how the threats are coming in. That's the number one way, mm -hmm. correct. And they're still, comp they're still attacking that front bar because that's the easy, that's the easy target. Now, um, is there uh, an email client like uh, that's better than the others? Like uh, Microsoft Outlook, that's mm -hmm. very frustrating for a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, including here at JTV. Do we love Microsoft <laughs> Outlook? Brandon? We don't. 
<laughs> but is, is there one that's better than the others? Not really from a client perspective. Again, I'm, I'm gonna refer back to just educating your employees. So no matter what email client you're using or what browser you use, when something comes in, you have to look for small telltale signs now. And it's not, it's not the bad grammar, it, it's not that. First off, don't trust anything that you're not prepared for. If something comes in that catches you off guard, question everything, Bart, that's number one and then learn some small techniques to just check it out and see if it's legitimate. But if, if you still question it, send it to a professional, get it to your partner's hands who can help you. And what people do when they get an, uh, a suspicious email, the, typically there's something in that email that's a call to action, mm -hmm. a link. Urgency, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that might seem a little off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, it's, if, it, if they're asking for yeah. something urgent, yeah. That's kind of a tip off right there that you might want to take that extra step and reach out to them individually. Or change critical information. Yeah. Reroute bank transfers or something of that nature. And the sophistication today means that you could get an email that looks like it's from your CFO, your controller, your CEO who's traveling but needs you to execute something urgently on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Those are outside of the normal. So question everything. Yeah, and it's happened here. Yeah. And really, it's happened everywhere, hasn't mm -hmm. it? And that's the point. It used to, everyone used to think the mentality was Fortune 500, just the big guys have to deal with this. It's now everybody down on Main Street, no matter how big and how small, as you mentioned, right here in Jackson. And we can't, or the law enforcement can't find these people. And even mm -hmm. if they could, it's possible or even likely that they're in a far off country. Correct, yeah. Correct. And they're organized business structures. That's what a lot of folks don't realize. I mean, they, they approach it just like a business, and it's their livelihood. We've heard uh, of the uh, ransomware, yeah. uh, and it's happening in hospitals, uh, schools, it's happened here in Jackson, yeah. uh, and they're asking for millions. Is there, is insurance, uh, is there insurance for something like that? Or are you out of luck? So yes and no. So <laughs> we, had, we had a little chat about the cyber liability insurance options today. And, and everyone should look into it if you haven't already for your business. But it, it's not just the writer. Consult with your, your advisor or consult with your broker and get a standalone policy. They're gonna make some pretty stiff requests of you as a business. Make sure you've got technology barriers in place. But if you ever have a bad day and that incident happens to you, they're gonna come in with a forensics team and they're trying to find out where it started from. So make sure your ducks are in a row, but if they are, then they'll pay the claim. And if they're not, then you've got another issue. So, and you'll help a company? Yeah, I was gonna say that's where Brian and his team can yeah. help that company get to the point where they're able to then get that insurance yeah. uh, going into it. So you're yeah. being proactive rather than reactive. Yeah, those, cause those forms are impossible to understand. You know, the, right. yeah. Uh, and who reads all their insurance small print anyway? <laughs> <Right. No. laughs> We're not supposed to. That's right. why it's so small. Right. <laughs> it's, it's about education, about consulting, advising, helping clients, or even someone that's not. Just walk through this. Um, it, it, it's it's going to save us all at some point. Well, we appreciate all of your uh, knowledge and expertise and uh, mm -hmm. your time today. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Now you're uh, based in the Grand Rapids. Yeah, that's office. home. Um, but I cover most of the state. So I'm out here in Jackson quite a bit. I line with Bill out yep. of the Jackson office. Spend time in Detroit as well. So Michigan's my home. Great. Nice to have you here. Yeah, pleasure. Uh, Brian Young, Principal of Technology Solutions, System Solutions, and Director of Client Services and Business Development. Bill Burke with Raymond. Hope you can stick